Bitcoin is the digital currency that everyone has been talking about for years. But here is the thing. Something big is happening in the world of Bitcoin. People are wondering if it's going to rise like it always has, or things will be different this time. Will Bitcoin soar in 2025 like it has in the past, or will something else happen? We will break down everything you need to know, so sit tight as we explore how this bull market might stand out from the rest. Whether you are a Bitcoin expert or just starting out, this video is for you. I'm Gary and it's great to see you in another video on the OG Crypto channel. Before we get to the actual part of the video, remember to subscribe to the OG Crypto channel. This will keep you up to date with all the news in the world of cryptocurrencies. And now, let's get started. So let's start with the basics. Bitcoin's price usually goes up in cycles, and these cycles are closely tied to an event called the halving. Every 4 years or so, the number of new Bitcoins that can be mined is cut in half. Less Bitcoin is created, which means it becomes harder to get, and when something gets scarce, the price usually goes up. That's been the story for Bitcoin in the past. After every halving, we have seen massive price increases, bull markets as we call them. The last halving was in May 2020, and soon after Bitcoin soared to new all-time highs. But here we are in late 2024 looking ahead to next bull run expected in 2025. The big questions on everyone's mind now is will this happen again after this halving? Or could there be new factors that change the game? One of the most interesting parts of Bitcoin is its supply dynamics. Unlike traditional currencies which can be printed by governments, Bitcoin has a hard cap of 21 million coins. Right now around 90.7 million Bitcoins have been mined and out of that number about 5 million are estimated to be lost forever. This could mean wallets where people have forgotten their passwords, lost their private keys or just forgotten about them. This leaves around 14.6 million Bitcoins in circulation. But here is a kicker. Over 73% of these coins are sitting in what we call illiquid wallets. These are wallets that show a little or no signs of selling activity. In other words, people are holding onto their Bitcoin, waiting for right time to sell, or maybe never planning to sell at all. This drastically reduces the number of Bitcoins available for active trading and buying, which is a key factor when we talk about price increases. Let's pause here for a second and really think about what this means. In traditional markets, when a lot of people hold onto an asset and don't sell, it reduces the supply. And we all know that when supply drops, that demand stays the same or even grows, the price usually goes up. In the Bitcoin world, this is even more extreme because of the fixed supply. The illiquid supply tightening we are seeing now is similar to what happened right before the last few bull runs. So could this be a sign that we are on the major verge of another major price surge? Many analysts think so. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's more to the story. This Bitcoin cycle is shaping up to be quite different from previous ones, thanks to a few key factors. In the past, most bull markets were driven by individuals buying and holding a Bitcoin. But now institutional investors are getting involved in a big way. For example, companies like Grayscale have traditionally been one of the largest holders of Bitcoin. But recently Grayscale has been selling some of its Bitcoin holdings, which is a big shift from what we have seen before. Why? Well, they are facing competition from lower fee Bitcoin ETFs, which are becoming more popular as a way for people to invest in Bitcoin without actually owning it. These ETFs make it easier and cheaper for regular investors to get exposure to Bitcoin, which could lead to even more demand in the long run. But here is where it gets interesting. While Grayscale is selling, other big players are buying up huge amounts of Bitcoin. MicroStrategy, for example, has been a Bitcoin buying spree, accumulating over 100,000 BTC at the time of this recording. And it's not just MicroStrategy. New Bitcoin ETFs are being launched, and these funds are scooping up massive amounts of Bitcoin as well. This is creating a bit of a tug of war in the market. On one side, we have entities like Grayscale reducing their holdings, increasing the available supply in the short term. On the other side, we have institutions and ETFs locking away huge amounts of Bitcoin, which could lead to a supply crunch in the near future. The result, even though more Bitcoin is entering the market from Grayscale, is being quickly absorbed by other major players, potentially setting the stage for a supply squeeze that could drive prices higher. Now let's talk about the bigger economic picture. Bitcoin doesn't exist in isolation. It is a part of a much larger financial ecosystem. One key factor that affects Bitcoin's price is the M2 money supply, which is a measure of how much money is circulating in the economy. Historically, there has been a strong correlation 
between increases in the M2 money supply and rising Bitcoin prices. Recently, the M2 supply has been expanding again after a period of contraction. Why does this matter? Because when there is more money in circulation, it can lead to inflation, and investors often look for ways to protect their wealth. Bitcoin has been increasingly seen as a hedge against inflation, which means that if inflation picks up, more people would run to Bitcoin as a store of value. But that's not the only thing to watch. The US dollar index, or DXY, also plays a big role in Bitcoin's price movements. When the dollar is strong, it can put downward pressure on Bitcoin's price because Bitcoin is often viewed as an alternative to traditional currencies. But if the dollar starts to weaken, something that could happen if the Federal Reserve starts printing more money or if global confidence in the dollar decreases, it could give Bitcoin a significant boost. So keep an eye on both the M2 money supply and the DXY, as they could be important indicators of where Bitcoin is headed into next few years. One of the most exciting developments in this Bitcoin cycle is the rise of global adoption. Bitcoin is no longer just a speculative asset for tech enthusiasts or early adopters. We are starting to see entire countries using Bitcoin as part of their financial systems. El Salvador was the first to make Bitcoin legal tender. But other countries with unstable economies are looking at Bitcoins as a potential reserve asset. Why is this important? Because it's changing the narrative around Bitcoin. It's no longer just a speculative investment. It's becoming a legitimate store of value and a potential hedge against economic instability. As more countries and institutions adopt Bitcoin, it could lead to greater stability in the market and further price appreciation. But it's not just nation states that are getting involved. Institutional adoption is ramping up as well. Banks, hedge funds and even governments are starting to see Bitcoin as a strategic asset. This shift in perception from Bitcoin being a risky, volatile asset to a valuable hedge against inflation and geopolitical risk could be one of the biggest drivers of growth in the next few years. And with geopolitical tension rising and financial sanction becoming more common, Bitcoin is increasingly being viewed as a way to hedge against sovereign risk. This macro transition towards Bitcoin as a global, non-sovereign currency could make this cycle stand out from previous ones. Of course, there are still risks and uncertainties. Regulation remains a huge wild card. Governments around the world are trying to figure out how to regulate Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Some countries are embracing Bitcoin, while others are cracking down. In the US, we have seen both positive developments, like the approval of Bitcoin ETFs and negative ones, like increased scrutiny from regulators. Depending on how regulation evolves, we could see increased volatility in the market. But on the flip side, if regulators take a more hands-off approach, it could pave the way for even more institutional adoption, which could put Bitcoin price higher. We also can't forget about the impact of the FTX scandal from the last bull run. The collapse prevented Bitcoin from reaching the $100,000 mark that many had been predicting. But now as FTX-related payouts start to happen, some analysts believe this could actually serve as a bullish catalyst for the next cycle. It's a strange twist of fate, but it just goes to show how unpredictable the crypto market can be. So what does all this mean for investors? Well, the current market might feel a bit slow, but the fundamentals of Bitcoin are stronger than ever. The deflationary model where the supply of Bitcoins gets tighter over time is still in place and institutional interest is growing. The big question for investors is timing. Should you wait for a more defined uptrend? or start accumulating now why prices are relatively low, with big players like Grayscale reducing their holdings and others like ETFs and MicroStrategy increasing theirs, strategic positioning could be a key to maximizing gains in the next cycle. To wrap it all up, Bitcoin in 2025 might look very different from past bull markets, but that doesn't mean we won't see significant growth. With tightening supply, institutional buying and global adoption, Bitcoin has the potential for another major bull run. But as always, there are risks, especially with regulation and market volatility. Whether you are a long-term holder or just getting started, make sure to stay informed and keep an eye on the trends. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more crypto insights from OG Crypto. See you in the next one.